Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down a prototype of Chocolatiers, which is a card drafting set collection tile laying game where two to five players are master chocolatiers trying to make the best chocolate sampler box they can. And the way it works is, on your turn, you get to do two actions. You can repeat the same action twice or to do different actions. And the main things you're going to be doing over the course of this game are grabbing individual chocolates to add to your hand, or spending those chocolates to grab individual box tiles, which are worth points to build your actual sampler. And now there's some other stuff you can do with your wild chocolates over here. I'll get to that in a second. But here I am at the beginning of the game. Everybody starts with three random cards, or three random chocolates in their hand. And if I look over here, I can see like if I get two milk chocolates and two raspberries, that's worth four points to me. But worth seven points is two mints and a violet. And I started with one mint in my hand, along with a nut crunch and just a regular milk chocolate. And if I look out here at what's on display, there is another mint and another violet. I combine these, I can get that. So I'm going to do two actions. First action, I'm going to grab me some more chocolates for my hand. Now I've got two ways to do this. I could take one card, and that would be an entire action, and then hey, I'm almost there. And then my second action for the turn could be to grab the mint. But then my turn would be over, and next turn I'd be able to convert these. However, there's a quicker way you can go. You can jettison, you can discard one card from your hand. Like say I'm going to get rid of this milk chocolate. Um, although, I, I, you know, I can see milk chocolate's needed here and here, um, although the nut crunch is needed here, here, here. Okay, so they're both equally valuable. I'm just going to get rid of the milk chocolate. It's the most common chocolate there is, so I'll be able to get more later. Hey, there's one on display. So if you discard one, you can take two as an action. So I will take one, two. And that was my first action for the round. After that action, we refill. And now for my second action, oh, there's a lot of milk chocolate. I could get some more and build my hand up, but I've got the set I need. So for my second action, I'm going to start making my sampler. There's the violet and the two mints. They get discarded and I take this tile and add it to my sampler box. Now, of course, this is the first one I've grabbed, so I just put it here any way I want. I can rotate it any way I want. And this game is basically a race. Once somebody has made a two by three or a three by two sampler box, that triggers the end of the game. And my turn is over. And I've still got one card in my hand. So Jen over here, it's her turn. Let's see, she's got a violet, a nut. Oh, she had the exact same hand I did. Wow, uh, that's odd, uh, considering I shuffled this up pretty well. But anyway, so Jen's ideal option is completely gone. Um, so I think she'll slow it down a little bit and build up. This eight-pointer here needs blueberry, mint, milk, and uh, violet. She has the violet. She has the mint. So Jen, she's just going to grab a milk. And she's going to grab a blueberry. Or, uh, uh, yeah, that was her first action. And no one comes out. And for second action, she'll grab a blueberry. And so she is done. And it's my turn, and I got to start building up because I got nothing now. I got one um, night chocolate. Although, there's another thing I can do. Uh, the, the action grabbing cards, the action grabbing tiles. Instead, if I want to use one of these as one of my actions, I can do one of two things with this wild card. I can either put it on my sampler to make this a wild space. So if I put this here, well, this was an empty space, not very useful. Now if I put it here, it can count as any chocolate, which means it combines with these two mints to give me a grouping of three mints. Later on, if I grab this one, now I've got a big grouping of five mints. And then say, oh, I don't know, later on, I grab this raspberry, or this one here, this wild card counts as mint, but it also counts as raspberry. And uh, that's a big portion of your scoring opportunity in this game. Not only do you get points for these individual tiles, but at the end of the game, whoever has the biggest contiguous group of mints scores four points. Whoever has the biggest contiguous group, single contiguous group of raspberry chocolates gets four points. Whoever has the biggest unbroken um, grouping of milk chocolate gets five points. Whoever is the first player to finish their sampler, to you know grab these tiles and build really quick a two by three, gets two bonus points. Whoever is the player who has taken the most box tiles that are threes and fours, i.e. they're much less valuable, they're not the really big, heavy you know seven or eight pointers, whoever has the most of these low pointers gets six points. So there's a lot of points to be had for getting these um, monopolies 
by you know getting big groupings but there's points to be had just by building as fast as you can too and of course i don't actually have these i've only got my one so but my first action could be to use this to fill this up now i don't have to do that now i probably want to do that later when i think the game is almost over and i'm trying to place this in such a way that i can give myself more majorities on more chocolates depending on what my opponents have there's one other thing that we can do with these though say i desperately because of the layout i'm trying to make i desperately want to grab um you know this tile because it's it's perfect. I'm going to put it in the center. It's going to expand these mints. I've got another tile over here that's going to be able to expand the violets, and I'm planning on putting a thing over here that expands the blueberries, etc., etc., whatever it might be. I really want this. I can, for an action, claim it by putting one of my wild cards on it. And now, on a future turn, I could build this by spending these or any of the other ones, but nobody else can take this from me. So, if you can see that somebody has a particular thing they're trying to build, or you think they're going to try and build something that you want to build, you can spend an action to grab it. Although, right now, what am I going to do? Well, I pretty much have to start rebuilding. I've got this nut crunch. If I get some raspberries, but there's no raspberries out here, there are blueberries. So, I'll just go on ahead and spend my turn getting a couple. Uh, my first action, getting a blueberry. And then my second action, getting another blueberry. And then here's the thing. I'm worried. If Jen's paying attention, she knows I just picked up two blueberries. And she might think, oh, I probably want that one. Because what else good is two blueberries going to do? So her action, uh, her first action would be to say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and claim this big seven-pointer for myself. I'm like, no, that's what I was going to make. And that was one action for Jen. And then for her second action, let's see, what was she saving up for? The blueberry, the chocolate, the violet, and the mint. And boom, she has started her sampler with a big eight-point tile. Nice, nice, nice. And so now Jen wants to build towards this, but she doesn't have to be in a rush for it because now she spent all these. She's going to have to start refilling as well. And back to my turn. Oh, woo! Another double blueberry came out. All I need is um, some mint as well. So, hey, here's some mint. I will go on ahead and claim it. And now, for my second, I can grab that one. But is that really what I wanted to build? Um, well, it's not bad because, hey, I can continue to build up my mint this way. So I spent these. Or, you know, it doesn't have to go like that. I mean, I could say go over here. But once I've placed these tiles next to each other, and you can't place diagonally, you can't go offset. You always have to place them orthogonally. Once you place them, they cannot be moved or modified. Although, again, what you can do is always put these wild cards down to give you more flexibility. Um, you know, I could put this down here. It helps with the blueberries. But if I put it up here, uh, it might help with mints. If I have mints over here, and it can help with the blueberries also, etc., etc. So anyway, so I've grabbed that. But let's say... You know, that was kind of lucky that there was a mint on the table that I wanted to grab. Let's just say this mint wasn't here. Um, right. And But I still wanted to grab that right now. Oh, wait, oh, no, not that one. Sorry. This one. I still wanted to snag that really quick. I have an option. I've got the two blueberries. I need a mint. There's no mints. Hey, my first action, I'll grab this crunchy nutty thing. And for my second action, whenever you are grabbing these tiles, you can do a matching pair as a wild. So I'll use these as a wild, as a mint. There's my two blueberries. And now I've got the next tile. I am a third of the way through the game. I just need to grab four more tiles because if I'm the first one to finish, I get those two bonus points. And I'm starting to try to do a majority on mints. Eventually, I'll probably have have to see I don't want to necessarily waste one um yeah if I ah see ideally I'd want a violet here because if this was a violet I could um you know put this here hey it makes my mints bigger and it makes although you know I mean this isn't bad if I don't put a violet here now this makes my blueberries bigger but this blueberry can't connect to this one unless I put one over here and now I've got four blueberries and four mints for the um, biggest grouping of mints and blueberries at the end of the game so that might be something I have in mind later although for each one of these I don't use at the end of the game I get a bonus point so I don't necessarily want to use them unless I have to anyway that was my turn now I'm completely empty I'm gonna to have to start drafting again over time and meanwhile, Jen's turn. She's built her one eight-pointer, and now she's starting to rebuild. And wow, that's a lot of milk chocolate, but not surprisingly, that's the most common thing out there. Hey, she'll just start to rebuild. She'll take a, a crunch. So now she's got that. And what comes out? Another crunch. Yeah, she'll grab some milk chocolate. And that was her turn. And there's a violet, which is the rarest. You can see there's these little dots here. Although this is a prototype, I think they're going to change how they indicate the relative rarity on the cards. You can check out the Kickstarter page to know a little bit more for this prototype. Anyway, so Jen refills. It's my turn. I'm going to refill. Hey, these are rare. I might as well snag it. And because it means I can start going for that one. And oh, a raspberry. I'll go on ahead and snag that. And so on. So 
G turns in Chocolatiers are usually very, very quick because the game definitely follows a rhythm. Uh, you build up for a big hand and then you spend it all to continue the puzzle of how to build up your 2x3 chocolate sampler, always bearing in mind that you're chasing after these um, majorities by getting like uh, colored tiles next to each other. This puzzle is very, very fun and crunchy. And if the game ever slows down with some AP, it was when players are trying to figure out, right, which is the best tile? How can I place this? How can I build to up my chances of grabbing those majorities? And, um, you know, after you've built, you're going to spend a little bit of time rebuilding, you know, by grabbing cards and with the really clever thing of, oh, somebody took the thing I wanted. I don't need this raspberry anymore. Okay, well, I'll dump it so I can grab two so I can pivot on a dime is really, really sharp. Everything about this game is sharp. It has lovely presentation. Oh, it does make your mouth water, though, um, just looking at all these delicious chocolates. Uh, after you're done, you've made your little box of chocolates, and you want to take it home and eat all of them. But this is a sharp, fun game. Uh, Jen, I think we enjoyed most of all the puzzle of how to lay out your tiles. That was sufficiently crunchy and thinky. And then just the, you know, the fun pass, uh, very, very quick and fluid, almost, um, you know, ticket to ride-esque drafting just zips along at a very, very nice clip. This is a lovely game that does a lot of stuff really nicely. Jen, I've definitely enjoyed it. That's the rundown, folks, on Chocolatiers. So thanks for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye